coming at you with over 50,000 watts of power. The Shaw Ferrelli Law Show, where all your views matter. Every Thursday, 10 to 11 a.m., only on Radio Zindagi, Jeja. आप सुन रहे हैं रेडियो जिंदगी ये जा The proud radio partners of Sukhwinder Singh Concert 2019 The views, opinions and statements expressed in the following program reflect the views of the program contributors and do not necessarily reflect views of CAB Broadcasting LLC and its management or its sponsors For all your views matter Everybody, uh, this is Attorney Shah Parali for the Shah Parai Law Show. Michael and Michael is on the board here uh, helping me. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, just, so I wanted to to say thank you to all our listeners for for being always faithful to our to our shows. And I know we have some callers, but before I start, Michael, before taking the callers, I just wanted to say anything I'm going to tell you today is my opinion. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. And the number to the studio today, 510-657-1170. 510-657-1170. Today we're going to talk about something I omitted completely last week, which was a very important ruling from a, from a federal court blocking the unlawful presence memo for the students. As you know, there was this famous, infamous memo that was passed on August 9, 2018, making suddenly people falling out of status and starting unlawful presence for minor violations, or I say quote-unquote minor or any violations. And that basically made people have to rush outside the country before 180 days in order to get back on track. But luckily, it seems a court has blocked it through a temporary restraining order while there's a lawsuit going on. And the lawsuit has been brought by a bunch of universities, etc. And hopefully that will, will take away this fear that many students have where suddenly they find themselves unlawfully present without even knowing about it. So we need to follow on that. And this is about the unlawful memo. And I will try to make a special video on that at a later stage. So uh, sign up or or subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Sharp Rally Law. So I think we have one caller, Michael. Let me take the caller. This is Sharp Rally Law. Hello? Uh, hello? Yes, uh, sir. Go ahead. Hi, Sharp. Uh, this is Mayur. Hi, uh, Mayur. First of all, thanks for taking my call. Uh, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thank so, you for uh, calling. Here's my scenario. So I have, I'm working with Company A, and uh, I already uh, filed my transfer with Company B. Last Friday, uh, mm-hmm. I got a receipt. So, is it safe to join on receipt? Well, that's a million dollar question. The answer is usually yes, but we need to kind of go over the factors that makes it safe or not. If the company, is it a consulting company or a regular company? So, yeah, frankly, say it is a company in forces with Apple. Okay, okay. I don't don't mention the the companies, but let let us put it this this way. Um, basically, how it works is that I always recommend to file it under premium, uh, and then yeah, it is we premium. Move it is premium. Yeah. Last Friday is a date. Okay, so I will recommend if it is premium to wait for an approval then move. I always recommend that. But if you're going to lose a job, then it's worth it to move to the other company. But remember, if it gets denied. Unless company A takes you back, then you will have to, you can always refile the case, but you have to leave and come back to get uh, uh, your I-94. Oh, so, so if, uh, if I join company B, so I cannot go back to company A? Yes, you can, as long as company A still wants you back and they have not canceled your H-1B. But then I have to go back, go out of the country and come back? No, 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 no. Okay. You are with company A right now. You have a valid I-94, right? If you right, transfer yeah. and you move to company B, company A might not be happy and they might cancel your H-1B. And if they cancel your H-1B, then if you get denied with B and you want to go back to A, guess what? You won't be able to do that because the H-1B with A will be gone. So if right, you don't right. cancel it, yes, you can go back. 
Now, if, you, if company A cancel, company B gets denied, your only choice is to refile the case, but this time it has to be done as a counselor processing. That's all. Okay. And uh, okay. with the uh, premium response will come within 15 days, for sure? Uh, not for sure. Uh, it usually comes within the law requires that, but if they issue an RFE, a, RF, uh, a request for evidence, then you will see yourself with, uh, with basically um, another waiting time. So another unfortunately, weekend. most cases okay. now ha has this, and they kind of delay the case. So usually within one month, if it is done properly and it's a good company, you should get an answer. But if you're going yeah. to lose the opportunity and you think it's a good idea, you can always move. But make sure that uh, it's very hard to analyze in like two minutes. But if you want me to analyze further, uh, I can I can do a consultation on that. Give me a call. Yeah, yeah. Then yeah. I can tell yeah. you. Yeah. Sure. Give me a call. Yeah. Five one zero. Yeah. I'll call you. Seven. Off. Yeah. Yeah. Seven four two five eight eight seven. That's our number to the office. Yeah. Five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. I have a full board, so let me take another caller, Michael. Thank you very much, Michael. This is Sharp Ray. You're live in here. Hello. Uh, yeah, hi. Uh, my name hi. is Neiman. Uh I have a question. I have a uh, approved I-140, and I got a three-year extension based on that. And last year, my role changed from uh, QA to DevOps. And my renewal is uh, coming up in uh, September. And uh, so the attorneys are actually saying that they need to file an amendment and then go f go for an extension. So what is the safe uh, thing to do here? Do you think I should just go in uh, with my valid I-140, just go in for a, a extension and then change uh, the amend, then put in an amendment or first put in an amendment and then go for an extension? Uh, that's another good question. Well, um, bottom line, it is... Um, it is, the I-140 has, uh, only thing the I-140 has to do with the extension if you need it for with it after six years, okay? Have you passed six years on your H-1B? Yes. Okay. So the I-140, it doesn't matter what position it is on. You, the rule just requires an I-140. Yes, it is on the safe side to have an amendment done. Uh, but an amendment based on, on, on changing the job description probably will not will not go through. Okay, they will have to refile the entire case again. So amendment usually works if there's some kind of uh, merger or things like that. Although it is possible, it is difficult to get. So bottom line, I I recommend getting your extension done and then go for the what they call quote unquote an amendment because the amendment itself might not even work. Okay. Uh, what, what, what did you say? It was code and code amendment. What is, can you say, please say that again? Because the thing is, just like you don't really do an amendment if you're changing a job completely and they're giving you another offer for the green card, which is the I-140. Because right. the amendment is usually there for a situation where you have a merger, a succession interest, and things like that. Although mm -hmm. the amendment can be used for that, from my experience, it doesn't really. Uh, work, but I might be wrong because I've, I I I know it just because um, we tried that before and it didn't work. So counting on the amendment, it's it's not it might not work. Bottom line, the the rule just requires an approved I-140. So use whatever you have right now, get your mm -hmm. extension, then they can take their sweet time with what they they call an amendment. Okay. Got it. Okay. 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 Good luck to you. Let Thank me take you. let me take another call. This is Sharp Rally, you're live in here. Hi, um, thank you for the show. It's a very great show. I've been following you for many years. So, oh, thank you um, so much. Yeah. That's sweet of you. Uh, thank you. Uh, I had one question, if you could help me with that. Um, sure. So, basically, I am on H480. This is, uh, mm -hmm. I am Sonia. I'm on H480, and um, mm -hmm. my... Uh, one of uh, my H1 has been filed first time uh, with with a consultant. Uh, uh, now let's say that if my if I get a full time opportunity um, mm -hmm. with other companies, uh, do you think it's a good idea to take it or? Okay, well, are you talking about taking the opportunity under H1 or under H4? Under H4 uh, and one. 
and my H one has been filed by uh, one of the other company okay. where I don't have a project right now. Okay, this is a very interesting situation. Let me kind of recap so that I understand the facts right. So right now you are an H four with a company A, and company A has filed mm-hmm. an H one for you, right? Yes. Now you're getting an offer with company B. You want to know if you can use your H four and move to company B, right? Yes. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yes, the answer short is yes. However, uh, in 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 theory and legally yes, but you will have two issues. Number one, once you leave company A, they might not continue on your H one. They might withdraw it. So until October first, any time they can withdraw it, and you won't benefit from the H one, especially if the H one oh. was picked up. Where the H one picked up? Oh uh, yes, it is picked up. Okay, so I will recommend first having the H1 kick in, then you move to another company. Even an, then you will not be an H4 because if the H1 gets kicked up, picked up, even the H1 gets picked up until October 1st and working few few weeks or few months with company A is highly recommended. The reason for that, if you just try to transfer that H1B before it it kind of uh, kicks in on October 1st. There's a big chance you won't get an approval because that's how it has been for a long time. Although it is possible, it's difficult. And number two, once you leave company A, there's a big chance they will withdraw the H1. Then what are you? You're going to lose that chance. Now, if you really want to move, that's fine. You can move. The best is to wait, get the approval, then move to, uh, move an H1 on October 1st, which will happen probably automatically, depending how they filed it. And then work mm-hmm. there for a couple of months. Then you transfer the H one mm-hmm. from company A to company B. I see. I see. The thing is that with the company A who has filed my H one, I do not have the project in hand, and it's very, very like hazy. I don't see opportunity there. So I was like wondering if there is anything which I can transfer or something. Okay, you can transfer. You can move from your H four if you think there's no opportunity even to get an approval. Because if there's no more project. Then the H1 itself is weak. It might not even get approved, and if it gets approved, it can be a problem. Then just ignore the H1, just move on your H4. That's it. But if the H1 oh. gets approved, remember on October 1st, you automatically okay. move to H1. That means the H4 is cancelled. For you to reactivate the H4, you need to leave the country, uh-huh. come back in H4, and then you can continue on H4 and H4 EAD. Okay. I see. Oh God! And this H four EAD right now is so shaky. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, everything is shaky right now. We are trying to make sense of things, but luckily things are starting to clear out a little bit for some stuff. So call me before you you make a move, and I will talk into uh-huh. details because I need to get more data yes. before you leave the the, the fact. Definitely. Okay? Let me call you back on on your office. I have your office number. Oh, yeah. So. And then we can talk on that. Right now, don't make any move without knowing, but. But in generally, if we were speaking generally, uh, if you uh-huh. if there's no prospect on the H1, then wh- why worry about it? Okay, okay. Yeah, <laughs> let me okay. call you back and like we can talk. Okay. But make sure it. because automatically you will move to H1 on October first. So don't think you are in right. H4 and continue working there. If here it gets approved, then there are complications that might happen. So just make sure right. that uh, right. that you you do things properly. Okay. Good luck to you. Okay. Uh, thank okay. you so much. You're welcome. And the number to our office five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. And the number to the studio today five one zero six five seven eleven seventy. Five one zero six five seven eleven seventy. This is Attorney Sharp Rally. We are May sixteenth, two thousand nineteen, and we are live. And we are talking, of course, about immigration law and that. That uh, famous memo now that has been, uh, I'm very happy that uh, the court, federal court kind of put a block on it. But we don't know if right now, just to explain what has happened, there was this memo that kind of gave a lot of fear to gave a lot of fear to everybody, pretty much. And people were so much into uncertainty that they didn't know. Because if you look at the rule of F1, you don't go into unlawful presence unless the F1 has been terminated. What this memo in in, in short, was doing is just suddenly you can find yourself accruing unlawful presence. That means being illegal without even knowing about it. But what the court did, they blocked it on what we call a restraining order. But this is a temporary restraining order. That means 
they are just blocked temporarily until uh, the lawsuit continues. So we will have to to follow up on that, and I will probably post updates on that. I I, I wanted to talk about that last week, but I got I got so much into other stuff I I forgot. But this is an important memo, and it's affect is going to affect a lot of people. Hopefully to the better uh, now with this being blocked, but that memo hurt a lot of people, and we know that. Uh, so I think we have one caller, Michael. Go ahead. This is Sh- Hello. 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 Yeah. Hi. Hi, Shibri. Hi, Can you, you hear me? Yes, I can hear yeah. you properly. Go ahead. Yeah, so I have a question. Uh, like, mm-hmm. I was on uh, H4, uh, H1 for a couple of years, and then I moved to H4 EAD, like, uh, three years back. Um and now I'm on uh, dependent visa kind, right? H four EAD. So uh, we are. My husband is uh, has filed for. Uh, I mean, they have filed for H one uh, extension right now, and we got an RFE for that. Uh, my question is, uh, we don't know what's going to happen, right? So do you think it's a better idea, or can I move back to H uh, one um, before I hear um, for the RFE result? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it might be. How many years you use your H1, by the way? Uh, I used three years of my H1. Okay, three years of the H1. So you still have three years in your hand. Do you have an I-140 approved? Uh, yes. Okay. So that means That's why I moved H- to H4 EAD. Uh, because of that, I moved to H4 EAD because my employer suggested that you don't have to use your H1. But now that uh, we got RFE, so I was thinking, I mean, we still didn't answer it yet, the RFE part. So mm-hmm. we have like you know, a couple of uh, I mean, months time. So we are thinking like, can I move back to H1 in this period? Is it a good idea? Or? Yeah, it might be a good idea, but you can always kind of um, wait and see. Then you do that. But yeah, of course, oh. it gets denied. When is your, your current, uh, your husband's current status expiring? Uh, June ending, June okay, 29th. So you still have till June to, to make a decision, so don't file anything. Um, uh, try to premium. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, my question is once, say for uh, some, uh, unfortunately, uh, it gets denied, my husband's H1 gets denied, then will I be able to go back to H4, uh, H1? Yes. Yeah, but you won't be oh, able I to can. do it inside the U.S. Once it gets denied, the H1, that means the H4 gets cut off. You need to file an extension on the H1. And then, so if the H1 is still valid, which I think it's not right now, you just need to file an extension. And then you, as soon as it's approved, you leave the country, you get a stamp, and you come back. However, if you oh. file it now, before the H4 gets canceled, then you don't have to leave the country. So one option is to file it now. Uh, without waiting, but you don't have to file it until uh, you reach the date of June. June, what you said, 24? I forgot. 29th, yeah, yeah. 29. Okay. So make sure if things are not going right, just get it filed before. It, if, as long as it reaches the USCIS, the extension reaches the USCIS before June 29, you are you are okay. You can continue, but um, you can actually. Um, then the only thing is different is that if the H1 gets denied, your H4 will be cancelled. You will still be able to stay, but you cannot continue working until the H1 gets approved. Okay? Do it under premium. Oh, okay. It's kind of a little bit tricky how it's done. It's not difficult. It's just a matter of t- timing everything right. So if you need help on that, just give me a call. I'll guide you how to do it. Okay? Okay. Sure, sure. Thank you so much. Okay. Good luck to you. 510-742-5887 is the number to our office. The website, attorneyonair.com, attorneyonair.com. Let me take another call. This is Shafir Ali. You're live on air. Hey, Shafir Ali. Good morning. This is Venkat. Good morning. I have one question. Uh, actually, I have got my uh, um, firm labor file from two different employers, and then uh, the labor got approved from employer one. And my mm-hmm. question is, is it safe to continue the process with the second employer or I can ask them to stop the processing? Okay, you got an EB-1 approved with with employer no, no, 1? Not EB-1, not EB-1. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, EB-2 so, only. But uh, the labor got approved from employer 1 and then employer 2 also has filed. Uh, so should I ask them to stop the 
processing is is not updated from employer one or is it fine to continue with employer two also it's fine to continue in fact it is good to have a backup or uh, one will be for future employment but if it is going to be a lot of difficulties on you then you can cancel it but it's always good to have two places like that if one for support you can always rely on the second one but it's not so necessary you just need what i will recommend is that wait for the i140 to be approved then you make a decision okay okay sure okay. yeah okay thank you good luck to you good luck let me take another call uh, this is shapra you are live on air uh, hi sir this is rajesh uh, yeah hi rajesh yeah thank you for taking my call Uh, I have welcome. a question. Uh, yeah, I have a question on uh, on uh, the change of status. Uh, basically, my H one is uh, approved, uh, which is applied mm-hmm. as a counselor, but I am on U S uh, right now. So, is that employer can apply for the change of status? Uh, and uh, are there any? Is okay, what is your sta- what is your what is your status right now? Uh, on L one. L1. Yes, they can do a change of status. What they have to do, they have to file what we call an amendment of the H1. The problem with okay. doing that is it involves re kind of reassessing the entire H1. So I don't recommend it, but it is possible. All they have to do is amend the H1 uh, from mm-hmm. a council of processing to a change of status. But when you do that. Uh, a man or an extension whichever way you 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 can you can take it the problem is doing mm-hmm. that is when you do it this way you are going back to the USCIS and processing the entire case again and uh, oh, okay. of course when you do that then they look at every single details again so even you have an approval now you might get in denial later the best is just to leave okay. and come back it's fastest and if the company is a good okay. company you should not have any problem coming back but it is possible to do okay. it i've done it before okay okay so i have one more follow up question on that uh, the my base location right. for the counselor uh, is that the same location we have to go for the stamping in india or uh, we can choose any of the uh, offices uh, because there are oh, okay, uh, okay. Big is it your first time h1b H1? yes is it your f- okay is it uh, d- did you graduate in the us by any chance uh, no Okay then you will have to go to India because they have to do security check on you if you were either okay. you're graduating from the US or Canada or it is your mm. second um stamping then you don't have to go for you don't have to go to India you can go to Mexico Canada uh India you okay. can go in any pretty much any embassy but you just have to prove that you they have jurisdiction there okay so in india it doesn't mean to be the same embassy which we have mentioned during filing is that okay to uh, yeah you can get it because now they have a pin number or something they call it they, they will accept it other places but it's recommended to go to the same place because right now any disturbance they are using it to give people a hard time so avoid that sure sure okay yeah okay thank you so much sir yeah. good luck to you let me the call on michael this is shabra you are live here Okay so I think we don't have more callers just to let people know anything I'm telling you today is my opinion you should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided you should contact an attorney if you have any questions and uh, for your information um ladies and gentlemen unfortunately whenever I I talk on the radio it's not really legal advice all it is is educational so sometimes I don't get get time to get all the facts with you and I will give you a quick answer which is general so you cannot rely on this 100% Um, most of the time, luckily, thanks God, I, I get it right. But there might be mistakes in the middle, so I want you to know about this. So it's always best to contact an attorney to do a consultation. You can contact me at the office, five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven. Five one zero seven four two five eight eight seven is the number to our office, and then you can check our website, attorneyonair dot com, attorneyonair dot com, or piralilaw dot com. Both are the same. And now uh, we are talking of course today about and Michael I don't know how much time I'm left with but please let me know and um and we are talking today about this uh this famous memo that really kind of sent the chill down the spine of many many people now suddenly luckily a a judge in federal court was able to kind of put a block on it so which is good news somehow but that doesn't mean it's the it's the it's the um 
we, we, we are seeing the end of this because there will be litigation on this and that things can go up, up to next year hopefully but the good news is that students will not have to worry that much about suddenly seeing their status being being oh you violated your status that means you you are cruel and unlawful presence etc which is a big thing because if you are cruel and lawful presence more than 180 days it blocks you from resetting your visa etc etc so I, I i highly recommend that uh, you follow up on this if you're a student because it's major. And also the the visa bulletin uh, for June visa bulletin came out, and we are seeing uh, wow we saw a, we are seeing a uh, kind of a little bit a well not a retrogression but India thinks oh it's moving with the uh, so India uh, EB1 October 1st on the second uh, chart uh, October 7 2017. And then uh, for the processing time, um, it's, it's uh, 2015. I think it moved from 2012, which is a good thing. So as for EB2, April 2009, 19 is moving very, very slowly. And uh, in uh, filing time, uh, June 2009. And But, wow, look at this. Uh, EB3 moving to 2010, April, one year ago. Wow. And um, July... 2009 is a, is a processing time acceptance date April. So we have to wait for the now USCIS to check with them which one they're going to accept. Um, so uh, I don't know, we have more calls, Michael. Uh, uh, this is Sharp, are you alive in here? Okay, no more calls. So you can feel free, we, we will be taking some few more calls for the next uh, uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, at uh, 510 657 1170. 510 I wanted to thank you all for, for being uh, active listeners. <laughs> the show has been going on now uh, almost, well, I, I should say it's going to 10 years soon. Uh, but really, it's, uh, it's going to be 9 years in 2 months. And I really want to thank all our faithful listeners. I have listeners for, for so many years. Um, uh, it's, it's really, um, it's really nice to hear people still kind of listening to the shows and it gives us the courage, gives me the courage to be here for you and to do the show. I used to do a lot of them, but now with my calendar and I'm getting old too, so <laughs> I can't do that many shows. But this show is also going to repeat itself Friday, that means tomorrow, uh, at midnight. <laughs> So you can always kind of count on listening to the show. I know I have a lot of listeners at night, especially our truck drivers, so I say a special hi to them. So I wanted to to make sure that uh, that things are, are done properly when, when it comes to those cases that you're filing now. This is it's becoming more and more complicated to file an H-1B. Simple cases are turning complicated because specialty occupation. Oh, another big thing we are seeing a lot is people who have degrees in a different field. For example, you're a mechanical engineer, you're a chemical engineer, and you have a lot of experience, of course, in uh, a, you have a lot of experience in your, in your field. However, um, suddenly you see yourself after 10 years being on H-1B that hey, you don't qualify for an H-1B because you are, it's not your, your field of expertise. And that requires a lot of attention. For one, I highly recommend that, that you, you go ahead in those situations, get what we call a credential evaluation based on experience from a reputable company. And I usually get two of them now because one is not good enough. Even that, it's, it becomes a problem now. So I recommend that you go ahead and you make sure that things are done, being done properly and follow up with your, with your attorney. Don't go and bug the attorney whole day because they won't talk to you. But at the same time, make sure you're following up because even attorneys, um, even seasonal attorneys, people who have been doing this for years, are, are getting caught in the system because you know, things are changing so fast. Look at this memo thing. I, it, cha- it came up, now it's, it's blocked, and I forgot to mention it last week. I knew about it, but uh, these are kind of things that, that is going to happen, and you need attorneys who are up to date with what's going on to basically take your cases. Let me take another call, Michael, and then we'll continue on that. This is Hello? Hi, sir. Hi, sir. This is Laxman here. Hi, Hi, How are you? My- I'm good, I'm good, thanks uh, for asking. So I'm no, on my, uh, my priority date is in uh, uh, January 10th, uh, 
so since it's a uh, uh, EB3 is moving fast, so do you recommend to, to switch to EB3? Is this is the right time, or do you know, do I need to wait? Okay, you're saying you're on EB2 right now, right? Yes, and my priority date is 2010, uh, January. Okay, and your I140 is already approved on EB2. Switching yes, to EB3 is not is not an easy task, by the way. If you have a perm approved, you have not yet filed the I-140, it's, uh -huh. it's kind of easy to move to directly to EB3. File it, the I-140 and the EB3. But once the I-140 is filed under EB2, moving to EB3 is a long process. So oh, okay. you can you can you can try it. Personally, I've never tried it. Uh, although I know how to do it, it's just um, it's a headache. Plus, I don't want to take chances for for the clients because then it creates a lot of fear. What happens is they go back in the case and start reviewing everything. And if there are any kind of uh -huh. mistakes that was oh mistakes or minor things that they overlooked last time, they bring it back. So there's always a risk to do that. Um, but I can tell you definitely EB3 is going to keep moving for the next four or five years faster than the EB2. Well, I cannot say definitely. I'm saying this is my opinion. But EB2 also will be moving but at a very slow pace. But we are going to ask from October my predictions. And again, I might be completely wrong. I think there will be a jump mm -hmm. on EB2 by October. So if you want to go ahead and refile another case under EB3, that's okay. But doing an amendment, um, because I have not done one, I cannot really tell you the success of it. So, But I know a lot of people have done it, and they have been able to, to get good results with it. So please um, go ahead and talk to them and ask them if the company has done this before and, and what are the success rates. I know many companies um, in the past with Chinese uh, dissidents, they were able to do that because uh, China had the same issue uh, two, three years ago. But since most of our clients are, uh, are from India, we never had to do that. So I don't have an experience with it, ex except I know it in theory. So I would recommend talking to the lawyer that, that is doing that and see if they have any success stories moving to the EB3. If not, then leave it alone. Okay? Yeah, this is more like a final uh, uh, approval, right? Like I'm right now, I'm on EAD. So since only few months... Oh, you have your EAD, uh, right? Yeah. So if yeah, you have your EAD and everything, just don't disturb it. Just be a little bit patient. I'm mm -hmm. hoping wait at least till October, then make a decision. Okay? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank okay. You. Good luck to you. Good luck. This is a very good question, and I get it all the time. Should I move on EB3 or not? Well, if you're going to do, if you have your perm approved, you're filing now the I-140, you can directly file it under EB-2 instead of EB-2. But if it is already approved under EB-2, now moving to EB-3 is kind of tricky. And like I said, in theory it's possible, but I have never done it, so I cannot really give you any practical advice on this. So talk to a lawyer who has done and been successful on it. I know a few lawyers have been in the past, but I don't know how successful it is right now. I didn't get any feedback. So maybe if someone has any feedback of success, please call us. Uh, the radio lines are still open, 510-657-1170, 510-657-1170. I think we have one more caller. This is Shark Hello? Uh, hi, Shark. Uh, this is Ajay. Uh, hi, Ajay. My question is... Uh, I already have an EB2 uh, from a previous employer. Um, I, I mean, I-140 approved uh, in EB2 category. And mm -hmm. um, with a new employer, which I'm going to join, I'm thinking, should I have a EB3-based uh, application file? Will that be okay? Yes, you can have it. If you're moving to another employer, I highly recommend if you can get a labor certification uh, file, and an I-140 under EB-3 approved, this will be very helpful because, like I said, my predictions, and many lawyers agree with that, is that the next four or five years we're going to see a jump on EB-3 and a slow down on EB-2. But we might be completely wrong because this thing is just like looking at a crystal ball. But but from what I, 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 I know, from my experience, I will recommend if you can get onto an EB-3, take, take the chance, okay? Okay, but but the fact that I will be having both EB2 based I140 and EB3 based I140, will I be able to you know kind of exploit both or it will be just based it's two, on? It's two companies, right? Two different companies, yeah. right? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, you can have as many as you want. You can have EB1, EB2, EB3. That's fine. <laughs> it's usually not recommended to have two, two with the same company, but if it is different companies, no problem. Okay? Hello? Hello? I think I lost the caller. Just for, just for information, yes, you can have as many as you want. I think we have more callers. This is Shah Pirai, you're live on here. Hi, this is Tiro. Hey, Shah. Hi, Tiro. Um, How are you? Good. Uh, thanks for your show. So it's giving a lot of useful information. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you so much. Um, so I have one question about this H4 EAD. Sorry if somebody has already asked. Uh, so I keep hearing that uh, this H4 EAD is going to be cancelled, but I hear that for a long time. So can you give some insight <laughs> into that and where it is right now? Yeah. You just hit the nail on the head. <laughs> I'm hearing. <laughs> I am. I've been predicting it's going to go away, but I didn't know that. It seems like the Trump administration themselves personally don't want it to go away. It's just the pressure from outside. So I think they're delaying as much as possible because a lot of companies are depending on it, and I think also a lot of Congress people have kind of. Signed up on this. I never seen anybody sign any any group of Congress people from both sides signing up on, and saying don't take it away. So I'm hoping that they will listen to them and it won't go away. They will just kind of play game back and forth. But it's already creating frustration. But ultimately, I think if there's a second mandate, it will go away. But it's not probably going to happen until next year now or end of this year if it does happen. But so far, we were supposed to get an answer on those publications on the 60-day rule and everything, but we didn't hear anything. So let's see what happens next. But um, I think it will go away if, if Trump gets a second mandate. He won't have a choice. But ultimately, we are hoping that there will be a, law, a bunch of lawsuits to block the taking away of it, a bit like DACA. That will buy us hopefully another couple of years. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, good luck to you. And again, this is just my, my, my opinion. I might be completely wrong. So let me take a Hello, this is Shapra. You are live here. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hello. How are you? Atik, how are you? Hello. I think I lost the call. Hey, sir, this is Amit. Oh. Hey, Amit, how are you? Good, um, how are you? I'm doing okay, I'm doing okay. Amit, give me two minutes and then I'll let you continue on that. I just sure. wanted to close with some debt settlement just to let people know. Sure. Uh, we had a lot of callers today and thank you so much for all the callers. Anything I told you today is my opinion. You should not act or refrain to act solely on the information provided. You should contact an attorney if you have any questions. And also I wanted to let people know that if you need any help with immigration or debt settlement, call us. Debt settlement is another area of practice where we help people. These are for people who are in debt, like credit cards, um, loans, uh, you name it, few things where we can help. Uh, we can get rid of those debts by, by settling them. And uh, these are not bankruptcy or anything. It's just a negotiation. And give us a call, 510-742-5887, to, to know how it works. It works usually on credit cards, um, mostly. And even if you have a lawsuit against you, we might be able to do that. So check the, the blog, YourDebtSettlementAttorney.com, YourDebtSettlementAttorney.com, and we, we can take it from there. And I think, thank you, Michael, and I think Amit will